what's up everyone welcome back to another episode of the venom vlog and today we're going to be talking about more flash thompson stuff we're nearing the end of his run and we have uh issue 36 and 39 uh 36 through 39 is what we're going to talk about today issue 36 is a standalone story that kind of sets up the rest of the book but it's called simple and then after that it's called kindred spirits so issues 37 38 and 39 are kindred spirits parts one two and three so that's what we're going to talk about is those four issues today and then the final episode of this uh, we'll talk about and then like maybe an episode or two from now we're going to talk about uh mania who gets introduced in this storyline and i'm sorry if you see me take a lot of big deep breaths and stuff or if you hear my voice kind of going out from time to time where i have to clear my throat i'm suffering from hypothermia and i'm having trouble breathing i'm on medicine i'm on other things uh so i'm doing the best i can and i just got done recording like five resident evil videos which are going to go up as nemesis episodes i moved that entire show over to my gaming channel so if you want to see behind the scenes photos and we talk about them like we do with Venom Vlog, but of the Resident Evil reboot, those episodes will be going up on my channel, on my gaming channel next week. So I'll put a link down below to that channel if you want to subscribe to it. We're going to cover all Resident Evil movie news, uh, Netflix live action TV show news, Netflix animated movie news or animated series news, and also the Resident Evil 8 video game. So there's yeah a lot of Resident Evil stuff content, you know, a lot of Resident Evil content stuff going up over on the other channel. So be sure to check that out. Uh, but in this episode, we're going to get back into, uh, which is coincidentally also a Sony, a Sony released the Resident Evil movie. So I guess I'm just a Sony channel now, like both channels are just Sony channels now, uh, which is fine by me because uh, I like some of the stuff they make. So it works for me because um, we're also playing Miles Morales on the other channel, which is Insomnia Games, who is now owned by Sony. So there you go. So simple issue 36 here, uh, art by Pepe Larraz. Pepe Larraz, who's been killing it on X-Men stuff lately. Too bad I hate all the X-Men stuff uh, from a writing standpoint, but at least the art by Pepe is always good. So Pepe Larraz drew this issue, so early days of Pepe at Marvel, and it's really good looking. It's a good looking issue. Uh, obviously, Colin Bunn is the writer of this uh, story, and I'm liking the Colin Bunn stuff. I know I saw a lot of negative comments about the Colin Bunn run, but uh, Swordsman, I think a couple other people are, are fans of it. I'm digging it. It's not the best ever, but it's fun. And I like that they're bringing in newer characters and, and different villains for Venom. Uh, they're doing different things with Flash in this run. He's in Philadelphia now. He meets Lord Ogre in this issue. Um, and they kind of set up essentially what I feel Colin Bunn probably had an idea for, which was a story that probably would have led him all the way up to issue 50 of Venom. And then probably around this time was told the book was being canceled. So I had to wrap up the story. So some of this feels a little rushed at times, but um, but I also feel like the pacing isn't too terrible. And uh, so for a rush story, or what could have been a rush story, it doesn't feel super rushed. It feels a little bit at times, but it doesn't feel super rushed. And I'll get into that here in a second of like what I feel is rushed. Um, but I like how this book starts off. It's Flash, you know, doing pull-ups in his house when, when he doesn't have the symbiote on him. And then it, it cuts to him with the symbiote lashing out as Venom. So he's like, you know, I don't have scans of this because we have the physical copy because we're reading the Cullen Bunn collection here. So that's what we've been going through this past like two weeks. So yeah, you have him doing pull-ups and then him at night as Venom, you know, and everything like that. And they, they just keep cutting back to him in his everyday life here. And then as a teacher, you know, at the school faculty lounge, whatever, eating, and then boom, back down to fighting. I like the pacing of that. It's really good how it goes back and forth. But then it shows Flash sleeping. And as we know, things are starting to happen while he's sleeping. Like his neighbor might have been killed by Flash and a couple other things. So uh, so there's a, a scene where the, the Cullen Bunn just goes full meta and just says, yep, it's time for a course correction. <laughs> and then the suit wakes up. And then that's when we get into the story. So Venom and Eddie, or Eddie, oh my goodness. Uh, Eddie, we just talked about in the last episode. Flash and Venom are running around taking down low-level scumbags and he starts finding out that all of them are pushing drugs and the drugs are killing the people that are trying to sell them and move them because they're addicted to it obviously so it's uh it's causing a lot of problems and a lot of deaths in philadelphia so flash is taking down these goons and he finds out that every time he takes down a group turns out they work for the same guy lord ogre so that turns flash in you know onto that guy and he's like all right now i got to find out who lord ogre is and, uh, and take down his operation and go at him directly. Because if I just keep taking out low-level guys, they're just probably going to keep getting replaced. I need to send a message to the villains of this city that there is no room for drug running here. So he's like, i got to go find this guy. Meanwhile, in his everyday life as Flash, he's a teacher, at, you know, a physical education teacher at a, a high school nearby, 
where Andy Benton attends. She's also a, lives in the same building as Flash. She lives like a floor or two above him. Um, but she's here, and he there's some banter with them. He's like, hey, you're not going to participate in gym class today again? She's like, nope. Meanwhile, the class bully, he's like hitting people. They're playing dodgeball, and he's hitting them, and he's like hurting them. He's, hit, he's like beaming it right at their faces. So he's like busting someone's lip, and he's hitting someone in the head. And Flash is like, dude, knock it off. Like, you know, like, uh, you know, I gotta be, he's like, I gotta be a teacher. So he's like, knock it off, man. And the guy's like, what? Can't help it that they're wusses. And then he has flashbacks of when he was a bully picking up Peter Parker. And he's like, man, I have to deal with me. And so it made me start thinking about this run and, and maybe a missed opportunity. And maybe there's something Colin Bunn was going to get more into as the run went on, but couldn't because it got canceled. But I almost feel like Andy Benton, she's a good character. I like her. She's, but right now she's just like the goth weird girl that lives in the building. To me, I think it would have been cooler to combine Andy and this bully. I don't know. It's just an idea of mine. It's probably not a good idea, but bear with me for a second. I was thinking Flash's sidekick should be someone who's kind of like him because it would add more tension to them. Um, so Flash, like if he had, if, if Andy was a bully, and she picked on other girls in the class or even other skinny, nerdy guys in the class. Um, like that would have been more interesting if he, if he had to deal with the bully uh, in, in that way. Like, and then that bully becomes his sidekick and, and everything. I think that could have been better than, because Andy's just like, oh, I, I have a dad and we live alone in this apartment and I don't know who my mom is. Andy is now an interesting character. Colin Bunn definitely set the seed for the character to become a good character. What they did with Andy in the screen book, I thought was outstanding. So I'm still glad Andy's around, but I was kind of thinking in this run, I'm like, wouldn't it have been cool if Andy was the bully? Um, I don't know. But anyway, so what, because what Flash does to deal with the bully is the bully is beaming kids with the, the you know, the dodgeball. And so, you know, he grabs the dodgeball and uses the symbiote to help him throw it really hard. And he knocks the bully out, uh, you know, or not, knocks him down, hitting him in the chest really hard with the ball. And Andy sees it. So it's like, okay, I get it. I mean, you're setting up the Andy-him relationship. But to me, I still think it could have been better if Andy was the bully. And, and that's me maybe consolidating. Sometimes I do that in stories, and it doesn't mean it's a good idea. It's just an idea. It's something that if I was the editor on this book, I would have ran by Colin. And if Colin said no to it, I would have been like, okay, that's fine. Maybe it's a bad idea. But I was just thinking about that. I'm like, oh, that would have been – because he does address like, oh, I got to deal with this bully again. I'm like, well, that would have been great if that was an ongoing thing. And maybe it was meant to be, and but the book got canceled. So – for all I know, Colin Bunn planned to do that, and it just didn't work out. So that's okay. But so as Venom is taking down goons, he comes across this old hoopty car, and he's like, you know what? I got an idea, and I love this. He creates the Venomobile <laughs> with a big mouth on it and everything. I I just thought that was funny. I was like, that's really cool. Um, so yeah, he drives the Venomobile into this big warehouse and uh, fights a bunch of goons. There's also this really great shot where right when he comes in, he gets shot in the head and most of his symbiote head flies off. And it's just, again, Pepe Larraz art, just amazing. But then he finds, uh, as he's in there in that warehouse, that's when he finally meets Lord Ogre. And Lord Ogre is this big dude here with these dogs and all these minions. Uh, hopefully that's not too blurry. Um, and uh, and he's like, you know, like, oh, you're the boogeyman, huh? And Flash is like, yeah, I'm the boogeyman. I'm here to take down your operation. He's like, well, it's not going to happen. And so Flash and him get into a fight, but Lord Ogre gets away. And he gets away by sending in his minions to distract Flash and sending in his dogs. And Flash, I think, kills two dogs in this. Like, gr granted, they're rabid monster dogs that, you know, but I think they could have been saved. I don't know. I'm a dog lover. So I'm like, ah, dang it. They could have been saved uh, and tamed or something. But, uh, but you know, Flash puts them down. So, um, so then he's like, oh, what a coward. That guy sends his dogs after me and his minions, and he runs away. Some big, tough guy he turned out to be. Um, and then he finds, he hears moaning nearby, and he's like, oh, man, are you kidding? Is one of the guys hiding in one of these vans? He opens the van up, Flash does, and he finds a bunch of women and children. And that's when he realized there's a lot more than just drug running going on in Philadelphia, uh, that Lord Ogre is into trafficking human life, which is absolutely disgusting and something that does happen way more than it should. It should be non-existent. Um, but it's gross. And so that sends Flash into the red. So from issue 37 to 39, uh, actually the artist is Kim Jacinto. So Pepe Larraz is not on it anymore. But I do like the art that Kim does. A little scratchy looking, but it, it does. I like the very clean lines at times, but a little scratchy on the shading. But it still looks good. It blends well together. But in this run, you have Flash 
determined to find Lord Ogre, and he's like, I'm just going to kill this guy. He's trafficking children and women, and he's peddling drugs, and he's putting some of these people he's trafficking on the drugs to see how they, you know, people react to the drugs and stuff, and he's a real monster. So Flash, like, we got to take this guy down. So again, this is stuff that I'm like, I like Colin Bunn's doing this, and Lord Ogre's not a villain that I think anyone's attached to or loves or anything. So it's just like bringing in other things, building a rogues gallery, building a, a supporting cast. I think Mike Costa did that pretty well, and I think Colin Bunn's doing that really well here. And Rick Remender did it pretty good, too, with uh, Betty and all that stuff. But I think Colin's taking it to the next level by bringing in Katie Kiernan, who shows up in this, and she's interviewing Flash, and she's implying that she might know Flash as Venom. And he's kind of like, why are you investigating me? What's this have to do with anything? And he shows goes to her as Flash and as Venom. So I think she's starting to put it together. Um, but I like that she's a character in this. I, I really do. She's a great character. And I, I I wonder what she's up to right now in the comic books. Um, and then meanwhile, Andy sees all this and sees him talking to her. And she's like, you know, and, and Katie notices. She's like, hey, I saw you on TV talking about, um, you know, toxin or whatever that thing was. But you didn't mention Venom. And I know Venom was here because I was here with Venom. And, she, and he's like, dang it, busted. So she's starting to, I think, figure out that Flash might be you know, Venom. Uh, but still, she's she's coming at him pretty hard, and, and she's doing a story now on Venom, and Flash doesn't like that, uh, because she's a good reporter, and she's going to find out who he is, probably, if she doesn't already know or figure haven't figured it out yet, and he's worried she's going to reveal that to the world uh, through an article or something. So he has that he's dealing with. He has Andy possibly knowing a secret that he's dealing with, and then he also has Lord Ogre. So as he's going out there looking for Lord Ogre, uh, he finds out that Lord Ogre has hired assassins, like Avengers knockoffs. So you have Jagged Bow, who's like a Hawkeye knockoff. You have, um, uh, what is it, Death Shield, who is like a Captain America knockoff. And then you have the Spider-Man knockoff, um, who I can't remember their name. Um, I think they say it at some point. But uh, uh, it says, my turn. My name is Blood Spider. Okay, Blood Spider. So yeah, so he now he's lashing out more as Venom. You're starting to see the teeth more. The tongue more and i'm thinking it's because they don't although they don't address it in this book i think because flash gave that syringe uh, uh injection to eddie he's low on syringes he's low on medicine so the venom persona is coming out a lot more and this is what i was hoping this run did because i was like venom has been dormant and neutered this entire time ever since remender has been writing it it cannot be happy with the fact that it is being drugged because it is a conscious thing we're starting to see more of that in this run, and I like that a lot. I was really hoping they went this route, and I'm glad they're going this route. So that's what it seems like. So Venom is coming out more and more, and he's fighting these Avengers knockoffs, and he's like, wow, the, their aim is good. Like this guy shoots, or this girl shoots very well. Maybe not Hawkeye level, but still very well. Um, this guy with the shield, he's kicking my butt like Cap would. You know, like Cap can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me because we fought before during Spider Island. So there's all these things that I'm like, wow, this is really great. Like Colin Bunn is using the continuity um, and then bringing in D-list villains for Venom to fight. And, it, and it's, it's fun. I actually, I got to, I like this. Like I was worried this was going to fall more in line of like the Monsters of Evil arc which, with Hellstrom, which I didn't really like too much. I like the Hellstrom stuff and what they were setting up, but I, the action was just too, too much. There's a ton of action in this, but there's at least some uh, story and heart to it too. And there's the relationship between Andy and her dad, which is uh, pretty much what happens in issue 38, after Venom goes to Katie Kiernan and says, look, Lord Ogre has sent in villains. They're going to come after me. If they find you following me around, they're going to they're going to hurt you too. I, can't, I don't want that. So please, you know, back off your story. And she's like, oh, I can't. I'm a reporter. I do what I do. But then as Lord Ogre is gathering all these villains who have now failed, Agent Venom has got away. Um, he's like, all right, I need new people. Who, who will come in and take this job and go kill this guy? I'm offering this, you know, X amount of money. And that's when Jack-O-Lantern shows up. And you're like, holy crap, Jack Lantern got out of jail. Well, you know, what's going to happen? You know, uh, how'd he get out? All that stuff. It does get answered in the next issue uh, and the issue after, in issue 38, uh, Kindred Spirits Part 2. It starts off with Andy and her father, and you get to see more of her home life, and they really butter you up. It's very clear they have a fun relationship. They're eating cereal together, but it, they make a joke that they're too poor to buy better breakfast, you know, buy more food, and they just have to eat cereal again. Um, and I think only one of them has enough milk for one bowl or something like that. Or yeah, it's, it's like, it's really sweet. Actually, I really like it, and it's very human. Um, but I was like, oh, the dad's going to die. <laughs> like, I already know that from reading the screen book, but I was like, oh, this is it. We're going to introduce to the dad now. We're seeing more of him. He's a great dad, which means he's probably going to die, which is a real shame that that's a trope in comic books. 
Um, but it happens and it sucks. Like Tim Drake's dad and all this stuff. Like it sucks, but it happens. And uh, and they Colin Bunn doesn't go against the trope here. He doesn't subvert expectations. He full on has Andy's dad die when um, you know Venom's out there fighting criminals and getting you know caught up with all these hitmen coming after him. Jack Lantern follows him home, finds out where Flash lives, and comes in and uh, fights Andy and her father. Um, sees them because she comes down looking for Eddie or Eddie for uh, come down looking for Flash. I'm going to do that a lot. I think. She comes down looking for Flash, and uh, Jack Lantern follows her back up to her apartment and fights her, and uh, and then comes in and fights her dad. And right before um, he tries to kill her dad, but then Venom shows up, and the two of them fight. And the burning is building around them, so obviously that's hurting the symbiote, and it's giving Jack Lantern the, the edge. He's you know one step ahead of uh, Flash now because the suit is burning. And so while it's burning and getting weak, um, and he dropped, like, uh, they're fighting each other, and Venom knocks the sickle, jack o lantern sickle away, uh, his, like, big blade. And then that's when Andy's dad grabs the sickle, runs up, and he's getting ready to use it and kill jack o lantern from behind. And jack o lantern turns, grabs the sickle, and stabs Andy's dad in the chest with it and kills Andy's dad. So, of course, Andy screams no, and then the fire spreads, and it looks like her and Venom are going to get trapped. But Eddie's like, Eddie, god dang, I'm doing it again. How many times did I do that in this episode? Do a Eddie counter. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. Maybe I'll do it in post. Um, but uh, Flash, Venom, uh, he, uh, it's only, and the reason I'm saying Eddie is because I just read King and Black number one. And so that's, I read this like a, like two days ago. King and Black one is fresh in my head because I just read it before recording this. So yeah, it's, <laughs> so I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, Flash in his moments as the fire is spreading, he's like, I don't care if I die. I don't care if Jack O'Lantern dies we die together. That's fine. I just want Andy to be protected. I, she just lost her dad. I can't have another death on my conscience, especially this young girl. So he sends the symbiote over to protect her, but then something really weird happens. The symbiote splits and the whole symbiote doesn't go over to protect Andy. Just a sliver of it does, a part of it. And it creates mania. And she says, um, coach. And she looks awesome. <laughs> I think her design looks really great. Um, so yeah, so Kindred Spirits Part 3 now has Andy as Mania, as a symbiote character. She hasn't come up with her name yet. We know she's going to become Mania, but she's now covered in a symbiote. And Flash doesn't know how. He's like, how did the whole... I, I meant to send the whole symbiote over to protect her. Uh, kind of like when uh, in Funeral Pyre, when uh, Punisher got shot from behind, and he sent, uh, Eddie sent the suit over to protect Punisher from the, from the gunshots. He, that's what he kind of tried to do here, protect her and get her out of the room away from the fire. But uh, a sliver of it stayed off and stayed on her. And what sliver that is, we don't know yet. We're going to find out probably in the next uh, story, which is the final story of this run. So we'll find out in that story, which is a three-parter called Mania. But for now, Andy sees her dead dad. She gets mad and she starts going at it with Jack Lantern. And she's fighting him, kicking his butt, you know, uh, getting the one up on him. Uh, you know, obviously Flash helps her out. And they finally defeat him. They're choking him. Andy's ready to kill him. They bust open the pumpkin head and they see a guy underneath. But it is not Jack. He's not burned. He doesn't have a burned face. He's not missing teeth. He's a dude. And Flash goes, wait, wait, don't kill him. This isn't the real Jack Lane. And she goes, I don't care. This one killed my dad. He's like, we need answers. So he grabs the guy and he says, tell me what happened. Who are you? He says, well, the original uh, Jack Lantern sent me here. And I work for him and I'm now he's being brainwashed in some way. And he's like, I have all of whatever Jack knows, I know. So that's how I knew you were Flash Thompson. That's not how I knew where to find you or, or the, the dots to connect to find you. Uh, so I found Flash Thompson, worked at a school. I followed him home. Uh, I, I saw the girl come to your apartment and I followed her, killed her dad. Uh, and I knew that would get under your skin. You know, I'm trying to kill her, obviously. He's like, so I did all this because Jack Lantern wants me to hurt the people that you get close to. He doesn't want you to ever be happy. If he has to spend a lifetime in jail, you're going to spend a lifetime with no friends and no one to love. And so I like that. I was like, wow, that, so they have a different guy being Jack Lantern. And he found, you know, Jack Lantern told him where all of his gear was and he came in and he showed him how to use it. So that's what he's been doing for the past couple months while Jack's been in jail. And this guy's now in Philadelphia chasing down uh, Flash Thompson under Jack's orders and stuff. And I'm like, that's crazy. That's so crazy. Um, so while that's happening, you know, uh, they, you know, Flash like, look, Andy, don't kill him. And he's like, he killed my dad. I have to. And he's like, please don't. Like, let's break this cycle. Like, let's let's not give in to our baser instincts. Let's be better. He's like, let's just let the guy live. This isn't the main Jack. And she goes, I don't care. He still killed my dad. And he goes, yes, but he could be programmed or puppeted or mind controlled. He's a random dude. We don't know the full extent of, of Jack's influence over him. 
So please, let's let him go. So Andy's like, no, like you, you came into my life. You ruined it ever since you've been here. You're my teacher. You, you know, you're a sucky teacher. Uh, and then my dad's dead because of you, your venom, all this stuff. She's like, I don't trust you and I don't want to have anything to do with you. So I'm, I'm getting out of here. So she decides to leave and get away from Flash. And then he's like, no, you can't go. I, you know, like, don't leave me. I, you know, we need to figure out what's going on with the suit, what, how it's attached to you and how it's still attached to me. Did it reproduce again? What's going on? We got to figure out all the answers. And meanwhile, while it's happening, Constrictor and a bunch of other villains like show up. And so there's another big battle. I kind of wish the end of this book was just more of them talking and figuring stuff out. But obviously we're going to get that in the next arc. But obviously just because Jack Lantern was taken down, the bounty has not been taken off his head. So all these villains show up to take down Flash. But him and Andy make short work of them, capture them all in their web, and then go and uh, off as a team now. And so they're like, okay, they worked out at least some differences and they're like, okay, Andy's willing to work with Flash to figure out what's going on with her with that and with the suit. But obviously she has to deal with losing her dad now and everything. So as a, a reaction to that, much like Flash, there's a great parallel here at the beginning of the story of Simple. Flash is out there beating up criminals every day. Now Andy's doing that. And she's trying to find Lord Ogre, who is the reason why her dad is dead is because he put a hit out on, on Flash. And that led to all these people, including a Jack Lantern knockoff, to come try to kill him. So now she has a target, which is Lord Ogre, and she wants to stop him, which also obviously Flash does too. So the book ends with Flash going, you know, like we got some Stark Tech phones. I can talk to Andy and that way we're not being, our calls aren't being traced. And I can talk to her and, and help her work through this symbiote situation. And then, but I do need some answers. So he does look at this obelisk at the end and he's like, I got to figure out some answers. I need to know what's going on. And he has this device, which I think can summon Mephisto, I think. So we'll find out what that device is and how it all ties together and how Andy is with the symbiote and all that stuff we'll get to in the next episode. Probably not the very next episode. I'll probably do one or two other things first. And then we'll wrap up the Cullen Bun run. And then after that, if I'm able to, before the season ends, we'll talk about uh, the Thunderbolts run that has Flash Thompson as a member of the Thunderbolts. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Guardians of the Galaxy and when uh, Flash joined them. And then we'll talk about the Space Knight run. And I'll try to do all of those in one episode each. So there'll be longer episodes probably, but we'll try to get to those before the end of the season if I can. If I can't, I'll save the Space Knight run for next season, and we'll discuss it at some point next season. Um, but I'll try to at least get through Thunderbolts and Guardians of the Galaxy, and the last story in this book, I'll try to get through all those at least by the end of the season. So let me know what you think out there if you read this run, if you liked it. I want to hear your thoughts. Uh, are you excited? Now we're into the Andy stuff, but now that we got Andy, it's ending now. So again, I felt like some of that was rushed with her dad. And like them laying it on really thick that he's a good guy. I felt like that's something you could have dragged out a little bit more. And the mania stuff you could have dragged out more and led up to issue 50. And you could add a big reveal that in issue 50, you know, here's all the answers you're looking for. I feel like Colin Bunn was probably on the path to do that. But maybe because of book sales or whatever, um, which now I feel bad about because I'm a Venom fan. And I wasn't reading this book when it came out. And I feel like if I and more fans did, you know, the book would have probably kept going and we could have probably got a different kind of conclusion to this arc and more Andy Benton stuff. So I don't know. So I, that's one of the things where it's like, hey, even if you're not liking a run sometimes like me with Venom, I'm still buying it so that people out there who do like it, um, hopefully that my one copy that I buy keeps sales up and other people hopefully buying it keeps sales up so the people who are enjoying it get the kind of conclusion Donny Cates wants to give. Because I, I do feel like that. I feel like this felt a little rushed at times and and I felt bad because I'm like I feel like Colin had more stuff to tell but who knows maybe Colin all he wanted to do was getting to the get into the Venomverse stuff maybe that was what he was going to build to was a, a multiverse of Venom stuff and he ended up doing that with Edge of Venomverse and Venomverse and Venomized so that he still told that story so for all I know he did finish his story so uh, I don't know but you guys let me know what you think of this down below and as always we'll continue our conversation down there and we'll get to the rest of this very very soon thanks so much see you in the future peace